If you've used Bolt.new, you know just how good it is at building amazing user interfaces. But this means nothing if we don't do these crucial things. I get asked this in all of my videos. How do you add users and store user data? What do I mean by this? We not only want our app to look good, but we also need to make it functional. This means adding the ability for users to create accounts and actually save information to their profiles. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that so you can actually build fully functioning apps with Bolt.new. All right, so first of all, if you've never used Bolt, all you have to do is type out what you're trying to build here in this text box here. So basically I'm saying let's build a mindful journal app for users to track their moods and how they are feeling. Also add a feature to make them say what they're grateful for today. And now you can obviously see that it is beginning coding this application. Give it a couple seconds and we should get our initial preview. If you've used Bolt before, this is obviously not new to you, but if you've never used that, I want to show you how it works real quickly. All right, so as you can see, we can click how we're feeling, we can share our thoughts and what we are grateful for. So now I'm basically prompting it to add some gradient features to make this app look nicer and give off some good vibes since this is obviously a mindfulness journal. Again, it's making some edits, writing the code, and we should expect an output here in about 20, 30 seconds or so. Looks like there is an error, but Bolt is amazing at handling errors. So all I do is fix the error and this actually fixes itself. Here we go. So we have a new user interface. It looks a little bit more nice as opposed to what it was before. And we could share our thoughts. We could write what we're grateful for and we could even save our journal entry. However, what we want to do in this video is we want to actually be able to log into an actual account so that way our users actually have a login and their own account in order to save all of their journal entries to their account. And so whenever they log out, they can then log back in and have the same database of journal entries. And this is really important if we're looking to build full stack applications, like for in your use case, if you want users to save any data, we need to set up a database to do so, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. All right, one last thing here, I'm prompting our Bolt agent to actually now add a dark mode and just make it look better. And then it gives us this, looks great. Let's move on to the functionality of actually adding a database. Basically, I'm telling it to now add Firebase to allow users to log in and sign up via Google accounts. So Firebase is how we're actually going to add databases and add the ability to log in. I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up. So do not worry if you've never used Firebase before, it's pretty straightforward. So basically what it's doing now in the background, if you are not a developer, is it's actually installing certain dependencies and setting up different files that need to be added in order for us to actually handle the authentication in order to kind of add logins and accounts for our users. So it actually went ahead and did all of that for us. Now it gives us this user interface where we could sign in with Google. However, it looks very weird and we need to actually change the layout of this so it's not blocking the rest of the application. So I'm basically telling it the user interface looks weird with the Google sign in, make it so they need to be signed in to access the app because we actually don't want our users to be able to access the mindful journal unless they are already signed into an account. All right, I've got some big news. I'm launching the first ever course on Bolt.new. Depending on when you're seeing this video, the course may or may not be live, but it's in the description to either sign up or pre-order it. This course is called Bolt Bootcamp and it will teach you everything you need to know to go from beginner to expert with Bolt.new. I've had countless people ask for it, so here it is. I wanna say, if you want to support the channel and also learn how to build software with AI, this course is gonna be perfect for you. I partnered up with my friend Wes, who has years of development background and is a full expert with Bolt.new. Coming from a non-technical background and partnering with a really technical person, I think this course is gonna be perfect for you to learn how to use this platform. Thank you guys, and let's get back to the video. Here we go, this looks great. It's almost acting as a landing page. You can see welcome to Mindful Journal. It says continue with Google. And then it also says by signing in, you'll be able to track daily moods and emotions, write private journal entries and practice daily gratitude. So this all looks great. However, we need to get this Google sign in button actually working and making it functional. And we need to do that by using Firebase. All right, so let's go over to Firebase console. So if you don't have a Firebase account, make sure to sign up. What we want to do is we want to click create project, give your project a name, and then make sure to set this up.
From here, what we're gonna do is we want to go over to come over to this build tab here on the left hand side and then go down to where it says authentication. Under authentication, click get started. And this is where we actually need to enable our Google sign in and our email slash password sign in. So go over to sign in method, click Google, make sure to enable this and then do the exact same thing for the email and password. So that way they could log in via that way as well. From here, go back to authentication and then go to our authentication settings. And we want to come down to authorize domains. Come back to your bolt.new app and basically say that you need to add custom domains in Firebase. And this way it will actually give you the domains you need to authorize inside of your Firebase. This is a quick little hack that makes it a bit easier. So you don't need to fish for this information yourself. One thing you wanna do before doing that is make sure to deploy your app because we want to authorize that domain that our app is deployed to. So it actually works when it's in production. So it's gonna deploy to Netlify and it will give us a URL. So that is perfect. And as you can see, it actually gives us these domains we need to authorize. So there's localhost, and then there's a custom domain that was just given to us by Netlify. So let's add localhost domain. Let's add the one that Netlify gave us. And then next, what we want to do is come over to our Firebase, go to project settings, and then go down to where it shows this little web application thing here and basically give it a name. And we need to copy this code here. So right where it says cont Firebase config down to where that curly bracket is, make sure to copy and paste just that and nothing else. Go back to bolt and then give it this information. So that way it could actually add this into the necessary files in order to integrate our Firebase that we just set up. All right, this looks great. Now let's go to our app that was actually deployed to a custom domain. So. We could see it prompts us with this landing page here and we could continue with Google. However, it doesn't actually work when we test it out. This is because our domain actually isn't authorized, I believe. So I'm coming back to our agent saying, I think we need to add more domains. And here it gives us a few more domains we need to authorize inside our Firebase. So stackblitz.io, webcontainer.io, And let's go back into here, come back to authorize domains, and then let's add both of these. And it should be working smoothly after this. Refresh our application. And as you can see, we are now able to log in with Google, makes it extremely easy for our users to sign in. All right, so now that we added the ability to add user accounts, we need to add the ability to add data to our accounts. So we're gonna come over to Firestore inside of Firebase. And this is actually how we're going to store this information into their accounts. So come over to your Firebase console. All right, so first of all, what we're gonna do is we want to copy and paste that code that we copied earlier, this Firebase config. So make sure to grab this again, and then basically say, now please set up the Firestore. That way we can save all journal entries to user accounts. And then here is the Firebase config. Paste that so we could actually try to set this up for us. Next, what we need to do is we need to enable and set up rules inside of our Firestore. So basically I'm asking Bolt to help me enable and set up these rules. And it's actually giving us this code here. So what I wanna do is I want to copy this code, come back over to our Firestore database, and then where it says rules up here, we want to delete what's in here and then paste and publish this code. Don't ask me what this does. I'm not a coder, but this is just how you set this up. So follow along with this. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna deploy the application and test this out to see if it's actually working. I log into my account. I try to save a journal entry. It looks like it saves to my dashboard. And then if we come back to our Firestore, inside of this database here, there is a new entry. So this means that it is actually saving to our account. And then you could also see that it adds a date, it adds a gratitude, the ID, the mood, the thoughts, and then it also saves the user ID, which is how we're going to be able to save these different 
journal entries to our specific users. Let's just go ahead and try this out one more time. As you can see, I'm writing down my thoughts inside of my journal, I'm writing what I'm grateful for, because obviously that's important to do. Life's great and we need to you know, practice gratitude daily. And let's save that journal entry, go back to Firestore, refresh, and we could see a new input here. This is working properly. We now have a database set up for our Bolt application.